The McLaren MCL39 has been the most dominant car of 2025. And they have led the way in innovation, especially in that beautiful front suspension that is giving them about a one year advantage on everybody else. Back in 2022, Adrian Newey talked about the importance of suspension in these regulation of cars, stating because of his previous experience with ground effect, he understood that effectively utilizing the underfloor to generate its downforce, it required a very stable car. As we saw in the beginning of that regulation period with porpoising and cars really just being unstable through corners, a big focus for Newey back on the RB18 was the suspension platform, including that of anti-dive and anti-squat. Fast forward now to 2025, and it is the McLaren car that has the most anti-dive in that front suspension and quite a significant amount in its anti-squat and rear. Now, while this has given Lando his fair share of problems, because of the car almost feeling numb in the front because of the anti-dive, we finally got our first look of that front suspension laid out with the brake duct, where you can really see McLaren going to the extreme with this layout to take this car to a different level on tire management. Right before I go in depth with this, wanted to thank you guys all for the support. Amazing per usual. Thank you all. We're on the road to 100K. So if you're new here, please go ahead and subscribe. Helps a lot and means the world. Let's get started with McLaren's insane innovations really through 2025. Now we have talked a lot about the McLaren car. We talked about the rear tires, how they're cooled, and really that advantage they have there, but this is another key component to why the MCL39 is the most dominant car, and it looks like it's going to stay that way, with a lot of teams scrambling to really copy this for 2026. I'll go over that later in the video. Now, the design itself features a unique top wishbone and a lower forward leg configuration. This setup itself creates a dynamic virtual steering axis, which in fancy terms is a way of saying it optimizes how the front wheels move and respond. This has gone over in detail by Craig Scarsborough, who actually called out this front suspension layout pretty much in the beginning of the season. But now that we have these beautiful pictures really showing you that multi-link front suspension setup for him and many others, they believe this is the reason for their excellent front tire management. It allows for very precise control over the front suspension geometry. And as I stated before, that gives you better control of the front tire temperature. Right now with these cars, as it is so close in qualifying, having tire temps be optimal is probably number one on the priority list for most teams. Ferrari is struggling with that, hence why they're so bad in quality, but okay in the race. Mercedes from track to track does struggle with that as well. And Red Bull can never really get it into the key window that they have enough tires in sector three. It's usually sector one and two where they can keep up. Sector three, that is where the McLaren comes alive and really takes over. Whether it's a rear limited track or a front limited track, that McLaren can be first every single time. And I actually truly believe that Oscar and Lando on most occasions are not getting the most out of this very dominant car. Oscar is getting the upper hand on Lando, but I do believe this car is faster then some tracks show, and even George Russell talks about it. If it's too hot, you lose grip. If it's too cold, you're sliding. The McLaren's design keeps it in those sweet spots that makes its mechanical platform a league above the rest. And as I stated, they locked in this advantage as soon as the 2025 season started, as no other team has this on the grid. So with McLaren using this virtual steering access, comes various geometry changes with bump and steer, which is very important for F1 teams nowadays. The biggest one being toe angle. Before the 2022 regulations, a lot of teams were extending the steering racks, but one of the most famous ways of fixing this geometry was made by Mercedes, the DAS system. Now toe effects turn in, but also drag and tire temperature, but these racks themselves were banned in 2022 and there was no actual solution to this until now with this McLaren suspension setup. Basically allowing them to have different toe angles between the straights and corners to keep the sensitive front tires in the temperature window. Now I said in qualifying this gives an advantage, but in the race it's even bigger. Consistent tire temperatures means McLaren can push the car harder without the actual degradation that most other teams are getting. The car actually reduces most of the understeer that these heavy boat-like cars have and maximizes the grip through most of the corners. It's not the strongest car in high speed, but in low speed, there's no debate as to which car it is at the top. No other team is running this but McLaren and really the data backs it up as to how McLaren's lap times, especially in those high temp conditions, 
is so quick. Think to Bahrain where Oscar had such an advantage and if we didn't have a safety car towards the end, I think Oscar probably would have won that race by 40 seconds or so. Now the actual lead and innovation won't last forever. As many teams caught on to this in the beginning of the season, it wasn't like it was something that was completely hidden and no team knew of it. Red Bull has been working on some type of innovation to really work on tire cooling. And we are supposed to see that somewhere in 2025. They still haven't given up on the car, but they're bringing much less updates than was initially expected for the beginning of the season. Ferrari is also another one of those teams that's testing a lot in the rear and the front, but making and copying what McLaren have made will take at least a year to get to that level of innovation and just the aggressive nature of that suspension layout. But for 2026, a lot of teams are going to prioritize the suspension and put a big focus on making that the key to having a stable car and consistent car from track to track. It is going to be a very different set of regulations. There isn't going to be that exact same floor like we've had from 22 to 25. And there will be more of a focus on the upper section of the car to gain downforce. But that doesn't take away that suspension itself is huge for traction, low speed, and the balance of the car, which is McLaren's strong suit and every other team aims to follow that for the new regulation period. They will have the time to actually get this in and implement these upgrades to their car. 2026 will open the doors for everyone. If you want amazing control over the front tire temps, then this type of suspension design with that virtual steering access will be the key for consistent race pace. Now I put a full focus on the front suspension and we've already talked about the rear of the car. It's in general looking at the MCL 39 and just how extreme they went over the winter to change what were the problems with the 24 car and really make this monster of a 2025 car. The car went from being super strong in the high speed to now being extremely strong in the high speed. Not the best, Red Bull still has that key attribute, but the best in low speed and probably the best in medium speed as well. Traction is insane and really race where it matters. They do have the best race pace Canada, I think, was that one-off track. We can still expect them to be the top car from race to race. Pretty much redefining the car and changing it so much from its predecessor, but accomplishing exactly what they wanted, which is what every team is looking to achieve. But as we can see with Ferrari's 99% different car, the outcome they wanted is not what they got. But every single time McLaren wants some type of outcome with their car, they end up getting it, which makes them also a very big threat for 2026, along with the innovations that come with this magnificent MCL 39. I'd love to hear your thoughts on in the comments below. Do you think we're going to see this in 2025 from Red Bull? Will they push it back to 26 if things keep falling apart? But it's something every team is going to have to copy. They have to make it if they think they're going to be able to be competitive enough to win the championship in 2026. Love to hear your thoughts on in the comments below. Please leave a like, subscribe, and me in the world and peace.